Doing my makeup has become not so fun anymore because I can either never find what I'm looking for or things are hidden in piles and I completely forget they exist. And now I'm running out of room for new products, which means it's time for a declutter. Let's get started with blushes. So let me get all these out into the open. Let's start with powder blushes because I have the fewest of those. All right, first, the definite keeps are these M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow blushes. I've had these for a few years now and they are just so stunning. They're this baked formula and they're like slightly blurring, but also very illuminating on the cheeks. They just are pure luxury. And I have the shades Venetian Rose and Rococo. Okay, I've had this BH Cosmetics Glowing in Grease palette for absolutely ages, I think since 2016. And I always think that I'm gonna be using this nude blush, but because it sits at a stack underneath all my eyeshadow palettes, I never reach for it. And these highlighters are just, I don't know, they're not what I, <laughs> like, look at that. They're not what I reach for these days, just a little bit too blinding. So I think it's time to say goodbye to this one. It's just been taking up space for way too long. Oh man, okay, so I did a ColourPop kind of haul earlier this spring and I got these blushes, they were, I think it was two of these for $10, which just seemed like an amazing deal. These are their Powerpuff Girl blushes. And I really liked this kind of raspberry color and this coral, but this coral is way paler than I expected. And it just looks kind of dusty on my skin tone. And this raspberry is just like also a little bit chalky. I don't know why, but I'm definitely gonna get rid of this one, Saving the World. They're just so cute. I'm I'm really bummed that this didn't work out for my skin tone, but you live, you pay money, and you learn. So I don't know, what do you think? I'll put it into the maybe. Speaking of blushes terrible for my skin tone, I did a Yes Style haul, and on the website, in my defense, it did not look this pale. This looks like a very young cantaloupe. And on my <laughs> on my hand, it just looks like milk. Just pure ashen milk. And this was like $7. Just very, very disappointing. Mandarin Aid by Misha. If you're very pale though, you might you might enjoy the shade because it is very silky formula. But yeah, I tried even using this as a setting powder. It was a no-go. Next, a, another ColourPop blush, and this is from their Alice in Wonderland collection. This is Silence. And I love the packaging, the off with their heads at the top. No mirror in this one, notably. But I wanted a matte red, uh, powder blush to complement my red liquid blushes and this I don't know there's something about this red that it's giving like watermelon a bit I don't know it's not as deep as I would like but I think I'm still gonna hold on to it just because that is a pretty unique shade in my collection and I already lost one of the Powerpuff Girls I can't I can't lose Queen of Hearts as well this one I'm very unsure about this is from elf cosmetics and I believe this is always rosy and it's one of their primer infused blushes. But let me tell you, I cannot get any pigment out of this. I don't know what happened. I've even scraped off layer after layer and it just, it does nothing for me. I can just use it to set a liquid blush without really changing the color, but it really is just taking up a lot of space. It's kind of big, like compared to say the Essence blush and it does nothing for me color wise. So I'm definitely gonna get rid of this, which is disappointing because I, <laughs> A lot of things are going to be very disappointing in this video because I bought this just this year. I heard really good things about it, but I cannot get any pigment out of this for the life of me. Okay, this is the blush from Essence, and this is in the shade Believing. I just like this as like a, a mauve kind of blush if I'm doing a, a cooler toned look. Yeah, I think it's nice, and these are only $3, but they, they last a really long time. This shade doesn't have a ton of shimmer in it. I just bought, where are you? I just bought Bespoke. And this one I got because I wanted the Patrick Ta blush and She's So LA, but it was a little light for me. And this is a nice tan that like actually shows up on my skin tone and it has a bit of like pink in it. I like it. That's not what we were talking about though. Um, I think this is a really great blush, especially for $3. And I like setting my other cool tone cream blushes with this. So that's a definite keep and would highly recommend checking them out. A similar story for this NYX Sweet Cheeks blush in Summer Breeze. I've had this for ages now and I like to use it to set all of my coral blushes. It is a little bit pale for me, like compared to the pan, I would not think that it would look that way on my skin, but on my cheeks, it isn't as light 
and it goes with pretty much all of my coral and papaya leaning blushes that I have. All right, last two powder blushes um, from Sephora. I've got, this is Tiger Lily and it's a blush duo. And I really like that you can either use these shades separately or mix them up a little bit. I really like using this in the summer, so I'm definitely gonna be hanging on to this. And I think this darker shade is even really nice for fall and winter. Definitely check out the Sephora collection blushes because these are super nice. And lastly, we have the Wet n Wild Bake Blush in Dare to Soar. Now I got this when the Fenty Beauty Highlighter Duo came out. That's like Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. And I got this as like a dupe for it. And it definitely is like, that is just a beautiful magenta shimmer, but I just never really used it. I actually used it this summer one time for the first time in like three years. And I just don't think that's often enough for me to keep it around. This hummingbird embossing is just so pretty. It, it feels almost like a collector's item. I don't know if they still make this. And I did use it this year, so it's not like it's sitting unloved. So I'm gonna keep this, but if I don't have room for all of my new blushes, then it's gonna have to go. I think I've decided I'm gonna get rid of this Powerpuff Girls one. It's just, it doesn't really fit with my, my looks that I'm doing these days. We're saying goodbye to five and keeping seven. Not bad, not bad. Cream blushes. Now these are by far my biggest problem. I have seven from Phytosurgeons. I had three, used them all the time, and then decided that I wanted more colors for fall and winter. So that's what happened there. And I will be keeping all of them, but I don't know. Should we do like a little swatch party? Let's do it. This one is my favorite shade, as you can tell by the massive dip. Okay, here we've got Ember, Smolder, Swelter, Fume, Sublimate, Exothermic, and then my most used shade, Evaporate. And as you can see, they just have really unique shades and there's always something for everybody. And I love how like this shade Swelter is made with a low white base so that it definitely works for all skin tones because that white base is what makes it appear ashy on certain skin tones. So I really value that. And that's why I have seven of their blushes. Who doesn't love a little swatch party, am I right? And I'm working on a Phytosurgeons brand review video. So there'll be cheek swatches in that. So keep an eye out. And another brand that I have a couple blushes from is Rare Beauty. I really like Encourage for an everyday blush. It's very mauve -y. And then these two are my favorite for spring and summer. We've got Grateful and Joy. And these are all in their dewy formula. I love that I can wear these without any other makeup on and it doesn't look out of place. It just looks very healthy and glowy. I am a little curious about Joy and if I wanna keep it in my collection, it's just a little pastel-y for me sometimes. Like it, it looks a little off, a little too much white pigment in it. And I have Ember from Phytosurgeons and then I also have an orange shade from Tower 28. So I don't know that I need it. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. So I'll be keeping these because who doesn't want a dewy red blush in their life? Next, I have these two blushes from LYS. So these are like a satin matte formula. They're not gonna be super dewy or hydrating looking on the skin. And I feel like I don't really need to put powder on top of it when I use them. And I somehow ended up with two like very pinky shades, which I didn't mean to, but this one is self love and it's a little more cool toned and more in your face pink. And then this one is more of like a cinnamon spicy pink they describe it as, and it's confident. I think I use self love more just because it's one of the only pink blushes in my collection. I don't know that I reach for confident as much. And here are swatches of the two. This is self love and this is confident. I'm gonna keep both of these, even though the shape is kind of annoying and a little bulky, but they are the only really pink blushes that I have. So I feel like, I feel like I would notice them if I got rid of them and I would miss them deeply and rebuy them and then be a waste. All right, this Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm in Peachgasm is just absolutely beyond its time. I mean, it's still really beautiful if you're into a really high shine look. I've never used this as a blush really, more of like a blush topper, but um, yeah, this is mega expired and I don't think I'd repurchase it. I have Goldgasm, which is like a true highlight 
And I just never really found myself reaching for this over Goalgasm. So no sense in spending another $40. All right, next up, I have two Tower 28 blushes. I've got Power Hour and Golden Hour. And these are very like balmy formula. They can feel a little thick on your skin if you're not used to them, but I feel like they can be sheared out very beautifully because they are a little more pigmented and you can just get that kind of like hydrated look instead of it being leaning greasy or oily. I've never experienced that with these. The shade Magic Hour was my first love. It's more of a, a pink nude, but I've really been enjoying this one's Power Hour and this is amazing in the fall and summer. And as is Golden Hour, this is just absolutely beautiful and can be layered with a lot of other orange shades to just kind of get a sunset effect on your cheeks. So these are mega keeps for me. And I know this is like a, I think they're a clean beauty brand. So these can go off and start smelling a little Play-Doh-y, but they're, I believe $20 if they haven't raised the, raised the price and I would totally repurchase these. Actually, I did repurchase Golden Hour. All right, last two cream blushes. I've got a super shocked cheek from ColourPop and this is in the shade Sounds Grape. This is so silky, just a really bouncy formula. And this one in particular is shimmery. They have like matte blushes as well if you're not into that. Look at that. Now this is kind of a strange thing in my collection because I only reach for this in the winter as like a blush topper. It, it just screams like holiday party to me, but I don't know if that's worth keeping it around and taking up space. All right, and my last cream blush is She's Baked from Patrick Ta, and this is like a burnt kind of terracotta -y red, and I thought this would be amazing for fall, and I loved that it has a cream and a powder formula, and the, the cream in this is kind of sheer. It reminds me more of like a gel type formula, and the powder has just a real satin finish. Some of them can be a little more shimmery than others, but this one is kind of devoid of shimmer. Let's bring in all the blushes we're keeping. Okay, so we really didn't get rid of a lot here, but blush, especially cream blush, is my favorite makeup product, so I wasn't expecting to really get super minimalist here, so I'm fine with that. And now I think we should move on to a kind of embarrassing part of my collection, which is eyeshadow palettes. I have quite a few and I really don't use that many. I really just do like neutral looks on day to day. So some of these need to go. They're really just taking up space. These two here are a glitter palette and a wet liner palette. I'm going to keep these because when I'm feeling creative, these are what I really reach for for colorful looks. And now for the eyeshadow kind of powders. This one from ColourPop is, as you can see, just immediately fell apart. I think I had it for like a couple weeks. It fell maybe like six inches onto the ground, onto the carpet and collapsed. But it has these really pretty duochrome shades in here. This one is like a blue and gold. And this one is actually pretty similar to Urban Decay's Solstice. It's like a blue to red shift. So I've really kept it around just for that, but I, I just cannot deal with this packaging any longer. So ugh, that's gonna have to go. Next, my Natasha Denona bronze palette. I love this, especially for travel. It just has all of the bronzy tones that I love to use and that like look really good on my skin tone. I'll probably just never get rid of this. This Pat McGrath Star Wars palette was a gift and I was just so excited to receive this. But the assortment of colors in here, they're all shimmers, so I can't really do a full look with it. But I like to just keep it around because like this is basically collector packaging and I don't mind if I don't reach. Oh, that's not ideal. Let's squish that back in place. But I do really like this red in here. This gold is just out of this world. It's very capital G gold. And this kind of moody, glittery, dark purple is also very pretty. So I'm going to hold on to it for that and maybe glue this back. This colorful palette from BH Cosmetics, um, I don't even know if they're still making palettes, but I got this because I thought it'd be perfect for springtime and I do use it in the spring. I reach for just a couple like bright mattes to put all over my eyes. So I'm gonna keep this as my one colorful eyeshadow powder palette. And I think that's the limit for me. I'm really not gonna use much more than that. This other BH Cosmetics palette, this is Hanging in Hawaii, and it's neutral, kind of leaning warm and pink, but something about these shimmers just looks so frosty and terrible on me. Like, it's just not meant for my skin tone, so I never really reach for it. And only on occasion will I reach for this palette just to do 
some mattes and then use another palette. It's just not the all-in-one palette that I hoped it would be. So I think I'm just gonna pass this one on. Oh my goodness, this TARDIS Pro palette I have had since at least 2016 when I worked there. And I've really only kept it around for this black shade because I have no other eyeshadow palette that has a black, like just a matte black in it. But it seems ridiculous to keep this entire palette around for a single shade. So I'm gonna work on depotting this. I tried with a magnet. I think I need a stronger magnet. We'll cross that bridge, but I'm definitely gonna get rid of this after I get this shade out. I just recently got this e.l.f. Bite Size Shadow in, this is their pumpkin pie one, I believe. Yes, and I've been really enjoying this for fall. It's got two mattes. This one's kind of subpar in my opinion, but I like that these are just shimmers that aren't too reflective. They're just kind of nice everyday shimmers and you can top them with like a space cowboy, like a glitter if you want to do something a little extra. I really like this and it was $3. This Rare Beauty eyeshadow palette just isn't very exciting to me. I think the crescent shapes, it's like a nice idea. It's aesthetically pleasing, I guess, but this giant glitter just does nothing for me. So I absolutely never reach for this. Although I do think this one red shade is quite pretty. Next, we have some ColourPop palettes. This first one is Going Coconuts. That's a, a good neutral everyday palette. I don't reach for this as often because I feel like these pull really cool on me and almost can lean ashy. I do like this dark brown here for using as a liner and this shade is nice, but I'm not sure if I need to keep this whole thing. I would like to get into maybe doing a Z palette and depotting shades and just kind of keeping a core collection of shades that I'll use, but I'm just a sucker for the packaging. I want to know the shade name. I want to know what palette's from. So thankfully these are pretty small and thin. So I think I'll keep this around a little more. Maybe I'll put this in my maybe pile and I'll try it out in a video. Okay, the brown sugar palette from ColourPop. This is a Karuchi collab. My mirror is long gone, but I will never get rid of this one. It's the perfect palette for brown women, black women, and I don't know why they don't make more palettes like this. It's definitely an all-in-one for me. And these shimmers, they're really not that in your face, but you have a good variety, like a really nice warm red-brown. I really like this kind of cooler blue-brown here. And then this white for like an inner corner highlight. It's very nice. I wish they would bring this back. And next we have Lilac You a lot. I just wanted to get one of their color palettes, but I didn't want to go crazy and get like the blue and the green and the red and the orange. So I just stuck with this one and it has a couple shades that I like, like this kind of iridescent purple and blue. Um, but I really never reach for this. I actually, looking at it now, I'm like, when was the last time I saw you? So this is just definitely leaving my collection. Didn't we just see this guy? I have another C3PO palette in my collection. This one is from ColourPop. And this one I got because I wanted a kind of honey palette. I was looking at the Urban Decay one, but thought this would be a good alternative. And these two mattes here just seem like perfect transition and like lid shades for my skin tone if I want to do just like a neutral matte look. The golds are kind of intense. I don't know if they're the most flattering for my skin tone. Especially this kind of yellow one here can make me look a little sick, but it's really cute and it even has R2-D2 there and there. So I kind of got to keep it for that. It just is pleasing to look at and that's more than I can say for some of the other palettes in my collection. And another Star Wars one. I will never get rid of this The Child palette. It is so beautiful. Just look at how cute he is. They really knocked it out of the park with this one. And I do like using these greens and the golden here is really pretty. I think this is a super shock shadow. So yeah, that's beautiful. And I like that it includes this reddish brown if you want to kind of deepen the outer corner. And this just like a tattooing shade is perfect for I think pretty much all skin tones. So I really think they did a great job with this palette. This Violet Voss Forget Me Not palette I got because I really wanted a blue eyeshadow palette, but I didn't want the Blue Moon one from ColourPop. I'll put it here. If you remember when they came out with it, everyone was going crazy. But I like that this had some darker blues and like royal blues, teals, but I just absolutely never use this. I think I did two blue looks with it and then I tossed it. So I'm going to see if I can just get away with this BH Cosmetics one. I feel like they're, I don't know, there's like two blues in here. I really think that's all I need. I don't think I need more than two blues in my collection. 
randomly I have these single shadows from when I was getting into like indie eyeshadow in like 2016. So these are super old, but these shades are still kind of pretty. Like this green I swatched recently and it's kind of falling apart. Like it's very loosely pressed at this point as all the, the oils evaporate. I'm hanging on to these Z palette containers because I'm hoping that after I do some depotting, I can fill these and maybe have like mini palettes. So I think the eyeshadows in these, their time is over, but I'm going to keep these containers around. This Fenty Beauty mini palette, I think these all like snap together. So they're really good for travel. And my friend got me this one for a gift, which makes me keep it around. But unfortunately, I just don't really use these shades and they do stain the lid quite a bit because they have that red pigment. So Sadly, I think I'm going to get rid of this, but luckily I have other lovely gifts from her that I can hold on to instead. This Charlotte Tilbury palette of pops, how I loathe it. It is so difficult to use. I need to use like an Inglot, like some kind of primer situation to make these eyeshadows actually pop like they say they're supposed to. They're just so dry and you pick up like nothing when you swipe them. It's just very frustrating. And I did pay like $40 for this, which is why I'm so hesitant to let it go. But I don't know if every time I look at it, it just brings me ire. I think I should just get rid of it. So that's what I'm going to do. This neon palette from Huda Beauty. I remember when she came out with these, I got the orange one and I really love these neon colors and the toppers are really pretty too, but I'll be honest, they're a little hard to work with and they're also pretty sheer. And they also stain. I just haven't reached for this in maybe a year or two. So I feel like I should probably get rid of it. Okay, let's do our little BH Cosmetics comparison here. I feel like there's a decent enough overlap between these peaches and oranges. I do really like this marigold color. I wonder if I can get that out. I'll see if I can do that. I definitely don't need that. That stains the bejesus out of your lids. So yeah, so I'll try and get this shade out, but otherwise, I will see you later, Huda Beauty. Oh, and this is another ColourPop palette. This is the What the Shell one. And it has a couple of these like iridescent topper shades that people say is reminiscent of K-Beauty palettes. I haven't picked one up yet. So I thought I would get this since it was on sale and I was doing a big ColourPop haul. But I just find it a little hard to use how to figure out how to make all these shades work together. And this little middle one, I never know what it's gonna look like, but it is very glittery. This is just one that I think will be a really fun palette if I can figure out a look to do with it. So I'm gonna have to head to Pinterest and try and work this into my rotation this month. And then lastly, two palettes that I will never give up. This is the Jackie Ina collab palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it is just the perfect palette for women of color, I think. Some of these definitely stain the lids like these three right here, but this purple is so lovely. And then Shookington, this, this purple shimmer is gorgeous. And I find that these shades haven't really like lost their luster. They're still like very pigmented, not dry at all, not patchy. So it's definitely like use at your own risk at this point, but I just love this assortment of colors and it inspires me every time I look at it. So that's a keep. And then the Urban Decay Party Favor palette is just magic to my eyeballs. I'll do a quick swatch of all of these. Absolutely gorgeous. I love just putting some of these shades on any look that I'm doing to brighten up like the inner corner, just add a little fun. And they have such a great variety of shades in here. If you can find it on like a Poshmark, I would totally recommend it. Cause I honestly think that the ones they just came out with are a little disappointing. All right, let's see what eyeshadow palettes I'm keeping. All right, so I'm keeping 13 eyeshadow palettes and going coconuts, I'm gonna be trying out and see if this is really gonna be sticking around. So keeping 13 and and getting rid of 11. So I feel like that's pretty good. I'm feeling honestly lighter already. And I'm really excited to get back into playing with eyeshadow now that it's not so overwhelming looking at like 30 palettes. All right, let's move on to single shadows, which are I also have a lot of. For my single shadows, I think I'm only gonna get rid of something if it's expired because these don't take up as much room. Sadly, I got this little trio of about face matte fluid eye paints and I have yet to crack into them. These are just a little intimidating to me for some reason. So this is another thing where I want to just find a Pinterest look to recreate and then hopefully I'll just like have a ball going at that and it'll make it feel a little less intimidating, a little more approachable. I do like using the white one even just as a base to make brighter colors pop. Um, I think this is a great one to have in my collection. And similarly, I really like this Rem Beauty liquid eyeshadow. I have the shade 
it's just heart, just less than three. Um, but this is great just to put a little base of a liquid shadow to then put other shadows on top of, especially for my skin tone. A nice neutral shade if you don't want to deal with an eyeshadow primer. This kind of does the job for you. These Dazzle Sticks from KVD Beauty are so beautiful. I have the shade um, Electro Bolt, and it's this gold with tons of like blue glitters. Every time I wear it, people are like, what are you wearing? I'm like, let me put you on. Thankfully, this is the only shade of it that I was really drawn to because otherwise I would have bought all of them. Now for these NYX Glow Shots, I have Wow Cacao, Golden Goji, and Plum Playa. So I use Golden Goji a lot as an inner corner highlight, and I like to use this one all over the lid if I'm doing more of like a coppery warm look. And I was thinking about giving this one the boot, but I did a like a pink look the other day and just added this in the center and it made everything pop beautifully. I really like these liquid eyeshadows. I think they can get a bit patchy if you're trying to make them totally opaque, but as a sheer wash of glitter, they are beautiful. All right, let's move on to my phytosurgent shadows. I've got two that are more of satin finishes. This is oxidized olive and chilled cherry. My only beef with these is that they come off a little cool toned and icy on me and I thought they would be uh, not that. But I'm learning to like them if I layer a sparkle on top, then it kind of gives it more of like a moody, like chilly evening vibe. So I will be keeping these because I'm enjoying playing around with them and learning the best way to wear them. These two are more sparkly topper types. I really like Crystal Constellation for just a very sparkly bronze eye. And Fractal Freesia is nice to top on top of the other shades that I was just mentioning. And again, I'll be doing a Fighter Surge interview video, so I'll have swatches of all of those there. These bodyography pigments are so beautiful, especially if you love sparkly eyeshadow, like if you like the Moon Dust Shadows from Urban Decay. And these are, I have a range, I'm not sure if you can see all the colors. Let me take the tops off. These are like pressed pigments. They're very soft to the touch. And I have a couple nude shades. Like this one here is great for an inner corner highlight. And then this one is great for all over the lid, a more taupey shade. And I just like these because they add a little oomph to any eye look that I do. Like this purple shade is gorgeous. And then I actually just did a TikTok where I use this all over the lid to make a smoky eye and it's just the easiest smoky eye I've ever done. I really like these shades and they even come in like duochrome colors. I would definitely recommend checking them out. It's a little hard to find them. I think you can get them at Macy's, but these are one of my favorite parts of my eyeshadow collection because if I'm feeling a little blah about the look, I can just reach for these and just like that, I'm feeling better. So needless to say, these are a keep. Okay, last batch of single shadows. This is my little ColourPop basket, but some Urban Decay single shadows have snuck in there. So let's get these all out. Okay, for this section of the declutter, I feel like the only reason I would get rid of something is because it's just dried out beyond salvaging. Um, there was a time where I was just collecting all of the ColourPop birthday super shocks because they would release one each year. And I think they're now like 10 years old or something. So I have quite a few of those. So let's go through and see what's dry and what's not dry. <laughs> My favorite game, dry. These are newer, so these should not be dry. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, that is that is quite dry. <laughs> is this a birthday shade? Yep. Oh, this is one of my favorite shades. This is Rosebud from ColourPop, obviously. <laughs> Just an absolutely beautiful bronze with gold glitters running through it. Perfect everyday shadow. This is a birthday shadow, but it's not too bad. Oof, I don't know if I like this shade anymore. I feel like it's pulling way more silver on me than I like. Yeah, and it's not applying as smoothly either. That's a bummer. This used to be one of my favorite shades because it has purple glitters in it. Oh, this is so soft. I just don't know that I use this color that often. It's just very red. And the, the glitters in here just don't feel as like sophisticated. I don't know. It doesn't wow me. So I think this will actually also be tossed even though it's pretty, pretty fresh feeling. It also already stained my hand and I don't love that. I'll definitely be keeping a little quirky and Ritz. These are my favorite neutral everyday shades. And while I'm here, we'll be keeping these two Urban Decay shadows, Solstice and Space Cowboy. Look at that shift in Solstice. I thought this was a great idea to, to buy this and that I'd use it a lot more, but I just don't really wear these kind of blues on my eyes. I don't know. I just don't feel like it complements my complexion that well. So 
instead of having it uh, take up space, I'm gonna part with it. That's such a pretty mauve shade. Definitely keeping that one. Okay, this one is a birthday shadow that is totally falling apart, super dry. I just think it's a very unique color. Um, after swatching this real quick, I don't think this flatters my skin tone either. It's making it look so gray. I'm sure there might come a day where I'm like, oh man, I really wish I had that ColourPop birthday shadow from six years ago, but I think I'll get over it. If I'm not using it often enough, I just don't want it taking up that space and that visual clutter, especially because I have ADHD and if I don't see something, it basically doesn't exist. So I want to see the makeup that I'm using the most frequently, the stuff that I actually like that complements my skin tone, all of that. What is this color? I feel like it almost like disappears. This is Rooftop Cocktails. Ooh, I know a lot of people like this one. I should use this more. That's it on my finger. I already know this is gonna be dry. Oh, it just looks dry. Oh no, prove me wrong. Oh, that's a pretty peach. But will I use a pretty peach? That's the real question. Like these look pretty similar and I don't think I need both of them. So that first one was birthday treat and now this is it's a vibe oh they're actually pretty different <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna use this sorry this i don't use nearly as much as i should but i do really like whenever i slap it on and this is a uh, green juice i really like that chartreuse color on my skin tone and then these two I think I've just kept because they have like a little dog and kitty on them and they have a paw print on the inside, but I haven't actually really used them that much. This violet color seems really pretty, but this one, I don't know if it, it really works for me. Like it's too light to put all over my lid, but not wow enough for an inner corner. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but I do like that one. I don't know. I just, I don't feel like I could split them up and I want to keep this one. So. Both of them get to stay. All right, let's see how we did with single shadows. I'm keeping 12. All right, not bad. And I will be parting with seven. Okay, I feel pretty good about this. These ones just needed to go and I didn't, you know, you just wanna hold on to things just in case. Maybe I wanna do a look with this. No, if it's been over a year, even two years for some of these and I haven't touched them, like let's, let's face the reality and move on. So feeling good about that. What should we do next? Let's move on to bronzers because I had a real bronzer kind of collecting phase. There were a bunch of cream ones going on. So let's do that next. First, I'm gonna start with this NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer that I'd gotten in a deeper shade to maybe prevent me from spending $40 on this contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury. As you can see, it did not do that because it's a little harder to use this little squirty pump and it's just not as easy as this, albeit kind of gross applicator. It's just a little bit easier to apply. So unfortunately, I'm going to be decluttering this one. I also have this contour stick from M Cosmetics and I have the shade Pangea. I went with this one in the hopes that, you know, I was ordering online and I was like, I don't want the contour to be too light, but I think I went too deep for my skin tone. So I don't really reach for this because I have to be very careful when applying it. And it's kind of sad to get rid of this because it is a little bit on the pricier side, but I simply just do not use it. I don't reach for this contour wand as much anymore, but if I am doing a more like glam night out, I do pick it up. So I'm going to keep this one around. This is one of the newest bronzers in my collection, and this is from Fido Surgeons. They came out with bronzers, and the neat thing about their shade range for this is that they have a group of golden undertones and then rosy undertones. So this is seven, which has a golden undertone and it's really dry texture. I've just been enjoying playing around with this and getting more of a, a natural bronze. And of course, putting stickers on it. A kind of similar formula is these e.l.f. putty bronzers. I have two shades. I like to use the deeper one to kind of contour and then use this lighter shade all over. So since they're so petite and great for traveling, I'm gonna be keeping both of these. And I think I'm gonna be keeping the rest of these bronzers. I don't reach for this Makeup by Mario one nearly enough because I think I got a shade too light in this case. Like, yeah, that barely shows up on me, but I'm hoping that in the winter, maybe it'll pop a little bit more. The shade dark just seemed a little too red for me. So I went with medium dark, but you know, lesson learned. Maybe 
maybe the next sale I'll pick that up because it is a really lovely, creamy, easy to use formula. And this enormous bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury, I absolutely love. It has a bit of a yellow undertone. This is three tan and I'm slowly chipping away at it. As you can see, um, it's just perfect for every day and it's pretty sweat resistant and has good pigment as well. So this is definitely my favorite cream bronzer at the moment. My two powder bronzers, I have a nice assortment of options here and <laughs> an assortment of two, if you can consider that an assortment. This one from Fenty Beauty is a bit of a lighter shade and this also has a yellow undertone. This is Caramel Cutie. And then this one from NARS is Casino and this is a little bit deeper. So I like having this variety and I mostly use these to set my, my cream bronzers. I don't really use powder bronzer on its own, but I like having this variation. So all told, we're keeping eight bronzers and getting rid of two. Mm, not so bad. Color correctors. This used to be one of my favorite categories, but I've really pared down. And I have this kind of like apricot wand concealer. This is pretty pigmented. So I'll use this if I'm doing a more glam look and putting it underneath any foundation or skin tint. So I'll keep this for those occasions. This Bobbi Brown one is perfect for every day. You can just wear it as a concealer even. It just brings out enough peachiness to cover some slight darkness. This one from Sigma is the one that I'm thinking of decluttering because the texture in here is just not my favorite. It's pretty waxy and thick feeling. Even though the colors are great for covering hyperpigmentation or any kind of darkness, I just don't like the tacky feeling of it on my skin, so I don't reach for it. But if you don't mind that kind of feeling, I would definitely recommend it because it's nice to get two shades in here that you can mix and match depending on the color of that part of your face because we know how a discoloration goes. And just wanted to say I've been liking this e.l.f. color corrector in blue. I've been using it with foundations or other complexion products that are a little bit too orange for me, and this makes me able to use them instead of tossing them, so I really like it. Concealers. I'm kind of a concealer fiend, so I'm kind of surprised that I only have six at the moment, but this NARS, uh, the Radiant Creamy one, is my old go-to, but I've kind of been pushing it aside in favor of this combination of the Coolfee Concealer and the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. These are both pretty creamy. This one's higher coverage and this is lighter and more dewy, and together they've just been giving a like natural radiance that I really like. So these are definitely staying. These NYX Serum Concealers were like, I was all about them a while ago, but I haven't really been reaching for them because the undertone, I feel like it makes me look a little gray. Um, so I have to wear them with a color corrector, but these I don't have that problem with. So I wish they would come out with more, maybe like olive friendly shades or something. Oh, and these only have a, a shelf life of six months. That's surprising. So maybe I should toss these anyway. It's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get rid of these for now. And maybe if they come up with a shade that works better for my yellow leaning complexion, I'll pick these up again. And this is the newest concealer in my collection. This is a Tower 28 one that just came out and I'm in the shade Playa. I had the shade lighter than this and it made me look um, kind of deceased. So I got this shade a little bit deeper and hopefully it can make this work. It kind of gives me a little bit of that gray effect, but not nearly as bad now that I've changed the shade and it's super creamy and hydrating, which is what I look for. I know I'm like happy with these, but this Kofi one is pretty much a shade of my skin. So I wanted something just a little bit lighter for under my eyes. And I think this one fits the bill. So all told, we're just getting rid of these two concealers and keeping these four. Glow boosters. Nothing crazy here. I'm keeping all of these. I love these Say Glowy Gels. I've got the deepest shade and the lightest one. Actually, I think these are the only ones that they offer for sale individually. They have a medium shade in their holiday kit that I'm desperately trying not to buy, but I love this one, Star Glow in the winter. Whoa, that was a lot. I love that one in the winter and then this one year round, especially in the summer, mixing it in with my foundations is so lovely. And it's watery, like a watery gel, so it doesn't feel heavy on the skin like these two. I know I just negged them, but these two can feel a little thick on the skin, this e.l.f. Halo Glow especially. And I was thinking about getting rid of this one, but I just used it this week now that my tan is fading a little bit. And it, the beige tone in this is just really nice and especially concentrated on the high points of my cheek. That helps mitigate that like thick feeling. When I was using it all over my face, that's when it was uh, quite uncomfortable. And the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Floss Filter is a little thinner in my opinion. And it also has more of an orange undertone. So it kind of gives me that like 
tan, bronzed look. So I do like using this a little bit more all over the face. And uh, I'll never stop buying this and using it. It's I have an unhealthy attachment to this product. Similarly, we can just breeze through my complexion face base products because I just have a skin tint. These two are basically a skin tint, the MAC face and bodies, um, just a really light coverage kind of vibe. And then if I'm going out to an event or something and I want to look like who is that even skin tone girl, I'll pull out the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. And it is super radiant, really lovely, a pretty good match. Uh, that tweaking it with the e.l.f. makes it just like a perfect skin tone match. So these are the four. Now we have another problem basket. So these are all of my highlighters and something's got to give. I don't use like I don't even use like a quarter of these. It's I don't know what they're all doing here, but let's get started. So this one from Kaleidos, um, Ray Ryder, is really pretty, but why is this packaging so chunky? That's something I cannot abide by. And I feel like this is such a pretty inner corner highlight, but do I need this big of a container to highlight my inner corner? I don't think so. So that's gonna go in the bye-bye pile. And of course now I'm looking at it, I'm like, whoa, but that's really smooth, that's pretty. Okay, maybe I'll put it in the, the try-out pile. Next, I have two Fenty Beauty Kilowatt highlighters and this one, okay, I was wondering which one this was. Yeah, this is Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. I bought this because of all the hype, like there was this photo of Rihanna wearing it to an event and everyone was like, what is that, what is that? And then we discovered what it was and had to have it. It's just a very unexpected highlight color combination and the the pink is still kicking, but I think after these years, this this like tangerine gold shade is just a little more subdued and I don't think I need to keep this around. So maybe I'll see if anyone is interested in this makeup relic. The other highlighter I have from Fenty, this is the duo that has Hustle Baby and Mean Money. And I mostly use this as an inner corner highlight. This one is really intense, but I feel like it could be sheared out really nicely for highlight. It's kind of this soft gold shade that sometimes is flattering on me and sometimes is not. So I'm going to keep this around just since I got rid of the other one. And maybe this can be a replacement for the Kaleidos one and I won't miss it as much if I just keep using this. This one from Nabla, I keep thinking is pinker than it is because of the packaging, which I don't like that. But it is a really smooth powder highlight and this is in the shade Privilege. It does have a little bit of a peach lean to it. I just don't use it nearly enough, but that peach is pretty, uh, I'll keep it in the maybe. This one's kind of hard because highlighters are really subtle and kind of depends on the mood and the, the tones of everything else that you're using. Okay, this NARS one, unfortunately, I know I spent like $40 on this, but it has to go because it's just a little too deep for my skin tone. And also it's, it's very just like dry looking, I feel. <laughs> it's more of a subtle highlight for sure. And combined with the fact that it's just pretty much my skin tone, it just doesn't do much for me. So I never reach for it. And it's just sitting there taking up space. This is a spectral shine highlighter from Phytosurgeons and it just has this like refined glow that it gives you. It's not gonna be in your face like some of the more sparkly highlighters. And I'm really enjoying using this. It can even use it like literally all over your face and it just makes you look like you have a filter on. Now I have a trio of these Maybelline Master Chrome highlighters and I just was on a mission to collect them. I think I spent like $15 on this from a reseller because I had to have the Puma collection one. But the gold one is seriously gorgeous, like for its time and today. Like <laughs> if you want an intense looking highlight, it is your gal. So I'm going to be keeping this even though, I mean, look at how busted, just for nostalgia. And because I don't feel like buying another one when this works perfectly fine, it's just kind of grody. However, these two are going to be getting the boot because this one is just not that flattering on me. It's this lilac and kind of a, I don't know, this kind of like gray neutral gold. I don't know what it's doing, but it's not doing anything for me. And this one, I think this is shade Topaz. Yeah, Molten Topaz. It's similar to that NARS one. It's just like exactly my skin tone and doesn't really make me pop in any way. Except that's kind of pretty. Wait, okay. Definitely gone in the maybes. I'm very urged because I only got this this year. It's a quad of Super Shock highlighters from ColourPop in these like really fun beachy colors. But three of these are just really dried out. I don't know 
they were on last call, so that's probably why. But they apply pretty patchy because they're so dry now. And then the other ones just don't like this. I thought this would be really cool on my cheek as a highlighter and it just looks kind of lame. So I don't know. <laughs> I thought I could be that kind of girl, but maybe I'm just not. And that's okay, but I'll be passing this on. My absolute favorite highlighter in the entire world, Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm in Goldgasm. Just the perfect highlighter for my yellow undertones. Love it. Keep, keep forever. These are my only two liquid highlighters. This is from Rare Beauty in Flaunt, and this is from Danessa Myricks in Majesty. This is more of a rose gold, and this is a like bronzy color. And I really like layering these with other powder highlighters and cream highlighters. They're just a great base if you're really leaning into a glowy look. So recommend definitely the Danessa Myricks. Rare Beauty, you have to work fast or else it's gonna get patchy on you. But I like that this bottle will last me my entire life. This, I don't know why I bought this, this highlighting glaze. I thought it'd be similar to the Glossier Halo Scope. That one in Topaz was like my OG highlighter, but it's just kind of sticky, kind of chunky and oily. Just all of those things at once. I don't know, it looks pretty on your hand, but on the face, it can just get like patchy. It's just not worth it in my opinion. This is a recent purchase for me, the Essence Pure Nude. This is the Sun Lighter, because I heard that this would be better for deeper skin tones. And I do really like it. I used this once dusted all over the face like a finishing powder and that was a bit much. But when you just want a nice subtle highlighter, like you have a lot going on in your look but you still want some glow on your cheeks but I think it's gonna like steal the show, this is a great option. And now we've got all my ColourPop highlighters. We have Churro, which is a beautiful coppery bronze um, that I will never get rid of. I've waxed poetic about this enough times on my channel. This one in Peer Pressure, I believe. Yes, this is super rosy. And I keep this in case I wanna do like an all pink look, but I haven't reached for it in like a year. It doesn't smell super awesome. So I think I'm going to be letting go of this. Wisp is my go-to highlighter if I wanna just slap something on that I know is gonna look very eye-catching and flattering. And it's also a great inner corner highlighter too if you want to just have a, a nice cohesive look. And this is from ColourPop's Winnie the Pooh collection that they did, I believe earlier this year. And I have only used it once when I went to Epcot and dressed up as Winnie the Pooh. Like this is just a total collector's item for me. I will never get rid of it. It brings me so much joy just looking at them. So all told, wow, we just cut my highlighters in half. I'm gonna be keeping 10 and getting rid of nine. That's incredible. And looking at these, I'm like, good riddance. I haven't reached for you guys in so long. This is so healing to be doing. Um, let's just keep going. Primers. Um, I hate this one. I got it earlier this year and I didn't think the smell bothered me that much. I don't even want to pump it out because I'm getting like a phantom smell of what it smells like. It's just really stinky. And then you're wearing it underneath your nose, smelling it all day. I know it's supposed to like protect your skin from makeup and all that, but it's not worth it. The e.l.f. Power Get Primer, I hate the texture, but it really does keep my blush on longer. So that's a keep until I find something that doesn't give me texture ick. The e.l.f. Poreless Primer, I feel like this does a really nice job, not as well as this Tarte Smoothing Primer, but this is also something, a relic of my time there. So that's like seven years ago so it's time to go so now i'll just be using the elf poreless putty primer and it's not as intensely blurring but it does kind of give you a soft filtered look just you're not going to look like a mannequin keeping two and getting rid of two nice for setting powders i'm going to be keeping all of these but i thought i'd just show you all what i have so i just got this list one this is a banana setting powder i've always wanted to try this because i heard that this is good for yellow undertones and I have the e.l.f. Prime and Say setting powder, and this is just like in a translucent shade. And these are matte setting powders, but then this one from Laura Mercier, I guess this is more of a like finishing powder, but this has a little bit of sheen to it. And then the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder, I have medium beige, and this also has like a little bit of shimmers in it. So I don't really like using this in the center of my face. So that's what I reach for these for and then this on the perimeter. And they're a really nice team. I'm really, I'm really happy with this group. For my face palettes, um, yeah, no one's getting left behind here. These, I would be buried with these products. I love using these hourglass palettes when I travel. I love that it has a mix of setting and bronzing and blush and highlighter. 
it's just absolutely perfect and their powders are so finely milled that I just feel like a little a little princess lady whenever I put them on. It's just a very luxe, nice experience. And these Dior palettes, I kind of went crazy here. I didn't, I don't need three, but this gold one and this rose gold one were limited edition. So, you know, I had to, and I am really happy with them because they just add an extra pop to any look that I'm doing, especially if you use these on the eyes, the glitters and shifts on them are absolutely beautiful. And this universal one, I love using on my inner corner or mixing them all together to do a nice, easy highlight that's really eye-catching. I just think the shades in here are really flattering, especially this stark white. I loved using this last winter and I can't wait to dip into it again. These collectively are my precious. Like, I love these products so much. All right, and the last group is this wad of lip glosses that I have. So let's tuck into this and see what's been hiding away. <laughs> Just seeing the separation of these, I'm like, these two gotta go. These are a luxe lip oil and lip stain from ColourPop. This is really nourishing at first, but then it made my lips start peeling like crazy. And this lip stain, I guess it was nice at the time. Not a lot of people had more neutral colored lip stains, but I think they're just better, more long lasting options out there now, including in like K-Beauty. So these are going. This Juvia's Place gloss is just super old, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And I don't think I repurchased because it's just a little thick for my liking, but I do like this milk chocolatey shade. Let me just corral my NYX butter glosses. This one in Tiramisu, I don't know. Actually, let me just swatch them all real quick. Okay, I just swatched the three that I was curious about. Oh, no, Praline, you're staying. So just these two, we've got Tiramisu here, and then bit of honey here. I think tiramisu is a pretty pink, but I don't know that I really need it in this formula because I have a lot of pink K-Beauty glosses. I'm not getting rid of any of those, so they're not in this declutter, but I think I can get rid of tiramisu. And this like orange tone and bit of honey isn't my favorite either. So I think I'll get rid of these two lighter shades and just keep the, the nudes and browns. This lip topper from Jouer, I remember when these were all the rage and so I saw one at TJ Maxx and had to get it, but I never use this and it's so messy to take off because it just gets sparkles all over your face, so this can go. This lip cushion from M Cosmetics, I thought I would wear this way more and it looks like a pretty color on my hand, but on my lips it it's very like corpsey. Just the way that my undertones work, it just makes it really pale and gray and not super flattering, but it is a comfortable formula. Absolutely hated this Gloss and Glow from Burt's Bees. It's just, the color isn't great. And then it lasted like no time on my lips and made them feel dry. So that was a fail. And these are definitely expired, these Dose of Color lip glosses, but I like them so much that sometimes I'll just put them on and take a quick picture because I don't have shades like this. So I mean, maybe that's kind of gross, but I, I'm getting rid of a lot, okay? Just let me have these. These formulas actually remind me a lot of each other. This is the Rare Beauty um, Stay Vulnerable Balm and the Bobbi Brown Crush Lip Gloss. They're very cushiony on the lips and feel really moisturizing, but after they dry a little bit, it does start to feel a little tacky. So you just have to reapply, which there are worse things. So I'm gonna be keeping both of these. Then I have a lip stain from Fenty and this is in the shade Berry Banger. It's very, very pretty and super intense and long lasting. I kind of want to get another shade, but I really, <laughs> I need to learn a bit of self-restraint. Like, look at how quickly it stains and how intense. It's it's awesome. And then lastly, I have this Crush Liquid Lip from Bobbi Brown that is perfect for fall. It's in the shade Haute Coco. And then this Lime Crime Plushy Lip that reminds me a lot of K-Beauty. And this is in the shade Butterscotch. It's a little bit more of like an orangey nude. And this you can apply and then just kind of dab off to get this like powdered lip look that you can top with a gloss or maybe another lip color. These are all formulas that I really enjoy, so I'm happy with what I'm keeping. Oh, this is the Hourglass Balm in Haze. I had wanted another shade, but this was the only one in stock at the store and I needed it now for some reason, but I'm really happy with it. It's a really pretty red and I really like this for the holidays. I'm keeping 12 and getting rid of eight getting better at that quick math. So I'm feeling good about these. These are ones that I just constantly would have to overlook when I was looking for something to wear. So I'm glad that they're just gonna be gone. 
this declutter has been so helpful. So here's everything that I'm going to be getting rid of in my declutter. This was so therapeutic. It was awesome to just go through and see what's actually bringing me joy and what's just become like visual junk. So thank you so much for going through this with me. I hope any of those swatches or views were helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, just give it a little thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what else you'd like to see from me. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.